conservation of Malaysia's natural resources, including those wetlands along the long coastlines of the state of Sabah, is vital. This is to ensure that the natural habitats for wildlife, such as thousands of these fruit bats, remain intact and are not in any way threatened. The ecosystem of wetlands is dynamic and highly productive. It plays a multiple function role that is essential to its surrounding habitats and it is an important resource for communities living in coastal regions of the nation. Given the wide range of benefits of wetlands, efforts for the proper management and conservation of these areas are absolutely essential. Positive actions to preserve them are indeed crucial. Failure on this count shall result in the disruption of the fishery supply chain and the very livelihood of local communities could be in jeopardy. The threats and challenges facing this daunting task of conservation, both globally and locally, are real. But unfortunately, these ecosystems and the biodiversity is really uh, degrading or losing at a very alarming rate. And wetlands are one of the uh, ecosystems which is really uh, facing the major threat. More than one third of the existing ecosystems, including wetlands, either degraded or not in a position to really provide the services what they meant for. States in Peninsular Malaysia have lost about a third of mangrove lands. The state of Sabah too has not been spared of such loss and degradation. The expansion of human settlements within the coastal areas has had a negative impact on wetlands in the state. In this regard, the Sabah Forestry Department believes that the influx of foreigners in the last few decades has been a contributing factor to the degradation of wetlands. Although mangrove soils are generally considered only marginally suitable for agriculture, yet there had been widespread conversion of wetlands in Sabah for agro-activities such as planting of oil palm. This massive conversion of wetlands has become a major obstacle to conservation efforts. most important thing, I think, is to look at the big picture. What is our big picture? Our big picture is, number one, there should be no net loss of the wetlands, which involves the mangroves, the uh, freshwater swamps, and the pit swamp forest. If there are any losses at all, they will have to be compensated for. The second point is, we need to address degradation. There are some areas that have been degraded as a consequence of bad practices in the past and also encroachments. And we do this through replanting programs, reforestation and so on. And of course, very importantly is to create the awareness of the value of these types of ecosystems. And we can address these three things, I think we are in the right path. There are times when we need to see and appreciate the beauty of our land through foreign eyes. A United Nations official who visited Sabah in July 2011 has this to say of our land. You, are, you people are really blessed to live in such a, such a beautiful place. It's, a, it's God's own gift to, to Malaysians, especially for the people of Sabah to have such a very congenial nature. You are really living in the abode of nature with the very lush green forests, uh, fantastic coastal marine areas full of reefs, etc. This is all the more reason why we should preserve these precious God-given resources. More than three billion people worldwide depend upon fish as the animal source of protein. 
coral reefs and the mangroves really provide the the breeding grounds and for the, they they responsible for the growth of the fisheries in the world. In Sabah, the state government has introduced a novel and traditional method of fishery conservation known as the Tagal system. Local communities living along the banks of rivers in Sabah have been empowered by the government by way of the system to manage these rivers in a sustainable manner. All mangrove forest areas are important breeding and nursery grounds for fish and prawn species, many of which are of commercial importance. These rich fishery resources are relied upon by the local communities for their livelihood and sustenance. For many of these coastal inhabitants, fishing has always been the primary economic activity for personal consumption and for cash income. Saba is a very important place for the production of marine resources, export of uh, fish, prawns and all those things. And this is uh, very important for the local economy, very important for communities. There are many fishermen here, so they are indirectly dependent on our mangroves. So if we manage our mangroves well, that means we will sustain their incomes in the form of uh, catch. There will be no deterioration or reduction in catches. And mangroves play a critical role in this, in the protection of uh, marine life, um, providing habitats for critical endangered species, possibility as a new ecotourism product, and um, all those things. Ecotourism has developed rapidly over the past two decades in Sabah, where many riverside lodges have sprung up along mangrove areas. These include those near Sukau in the lower region of Kinabatangan River and along the Garama River near the Klias Peat Swamp Field Centre in the Borford District where visitors could enjoy nature at its best. They may take river cruises to watch wildlife in their natural habitat such as proboscis monkeys, Borneo pygmy elephants, a variety of birds like the hornbills and the amazing fireflies in the evening. Sabah offers a host of other ecotourism destinations such as the world-renowned dive sites at Sipadan and Mabul Islands off Semporna and the Turtle Islands Park off the coast of Sandakan. These ecotourism activities have become generators of revenue for local communities in terms of employment and supply of goods and services. Operators of ecotourism enterprises pay serious attention to issues related to conservation of the environment and the need to have productive engagement with the local people for mutual and long-term benefits. There is also grave concern globally as well as locally over the increasing pressures on water quality and quantity caused by the continued degradation and loss of wetlands. There is a necessity for the people to be aware that wetlands are the natural infrastructure that receive water, restore water and distribute water from the mountain to the sea. So if people understand that, and people understand that we need a good management of wetland to have water quality, if people understand that when our wetlands are healthy, we remain healthy. When our wetlands are degraded, our health will, uh, will be also degraded. And water quality, again, I'm talking about it because uh, in some countries, it is still not understood that water quality is very important for life. If we lose the quality of our water, we cannot develop. There is no country that can survive without water quality. The network of wetlands truly supports the whole ecosystem of the forests. The forests receive water, manage it, 
and contribute to the water cycle. Over 90% of the 340,000 hectares of mangroves in Sabah are largely still intact and most of these areas are under the stewardship of the Sabah Forestry Department. Mangroves in Sabah are distributed abundantly in most of the coastal areas, accounting for 59% of the country's mangrove. Sarawak has some 23% and Peninsular Malaysia 18% of mangrove forests. Conservation of flora and fauna of mangroves in Sabah is assured under the state legislation, particularly the forest enactment of 1968. The total area covered by 22 mangrove forest and virgin jungle reserves is close to 328,000 hectares. The total mangrove areas that need to be rehabilitated in Sabah are approximately 3,000 275 hectares. They are in the coastal areas and 2,440 hectares of which are under forest reserves. Since 2006, the Sabah Forestry Department has carried out a number of mangrove forest rehabilitation and conservation projects throughout the state. They include rehabilitation and restoration of degraded wetland areas such as abandoned shrimp farms, eroded coastal areas, and encroached areas in mangrove forest reserves. First is the restoration of areas which cannot regenerate on their own as a consequence of encroachments, such as the existence of illegal shrimp ponds, fish ponds, and so on. And we have achieved about 800 hectares of such restoration work costing us just over 5 million ringgit. The department has also entered into a collaborative effort with the International Society for Mangrove Ecosystems to implement a mangrove planting program in Sabah for the period from 2011 to 2014. The rehabilitation project is funded by the Tokyo Marine Insurance Company Limited of Japan. Uh, in 1999, we decided to plant mangrove uh, to uh, be more kind to the environmental of the earth. And we started uh, doing plantation of mangrove in uh, Asian countries and also some in Pacific Islands. And, but this time, because of the assistance from ISME, uh, they were able to uh, bring this uh, project together with State of Sabah, and so we have decided to uh, fund this project. The Sabah Forestry Department is now looking into the possibility of developing a model area that would serve as an example of what should be done for mangrove forests in the state. It is similar to the Daramakot model for inland forests. The proposed area is at the Kuala Bongoya and Kuala Labok mangrove reserves in the Buluran district covering about 70,000 hectares. Once the forest management plan for it is approved, implementation will commence. At our level whereby we will try to look for potential collaborators, potential partners, because in order to put this under proper management, this really requires huge resources. Actually the whole idea for, <coughs> for this uh, is to apply the, the wise use of concept for wetlands in accordance with the Ramsar Convention. For sure, we'll have it implemented on the ground, all those things, uh, once it is approved. And that will address all the requirements of sustainability, which looks at the environmental part of it, the, um, the economic part of it, and of course the social part of it. So that's a model that has not been started, but it's something which we want to implement soon. The Ramsar Convention registers sites all over the world in recognition of their richness and value in biodiversity. The largest of such Ramsar sites in Malaysia is located near the mouths of two major rivers in Sabah, the Kinabatangan and Sagama rivers. This Ramsar site 
covering just over 78,800 hectares of wetlands and intertidal forest, is within three forest reserves. These are the Trusan Kinabatangan Mangrove Forest Reserve, the Kulamba Wildlife Forest Reserve, and the Kuala Maruap and Kuala Sagama Mangrove Forest Reserve. Herein is one of the richest wetland ecosystems in this part of the world. The recognition of the value of the site is the reason for listing it and then taking action to manage the site to make, uh, make it long-term conservation and long-term wise use of it. We, we are really uh, taking uh, seriously the linkage, the interdependence between forest and wetland. Being largely undisturbed mangrove forests, rare peat swamp forests and wet grassland on peat, the lower Kinabatangan and Sagama wetlands naturally serve as an important habitat for an array of wildlife. These include some endangered species such as the wild water buffaloes known as tumbadaos, the proboscis monkeys, the orangutans, the Sumatran rhinoceros, and the Borneo pygmy elephants. There is also a variety of migratory birds and protected bird species found within the site. It's also important to protect the wildlife that are found in the Ramsar site. Our job before the formulation of the Ramsar site uh, certification was to protect, protect that area to allow some small scale exploitation for local use and all that. The impacts of the palm oil industry in the Kinabatangan and Sagama River basins are among major threats to the Ramsar site. Such threats include the high level of total suspended solids and other pollution of river water caused by the industry, fragmentation of the forest ecosystem and wildlife connectivity to the Ramsar site. Conservation of areas upstream is, therefore, as important and could result in serious negative consequences if neglected. One oil palm plantation firm in Sabah that takes this matter of conservation seriously is the IJM Plantations Berhad. The group believes that palm oil can be produced in a sustainable manner and it is committed to minimizing the impact of commercial agricultural activities on the environment. In our journey towards sustainability, the company adopts good agricultural practices throughout our operations. The business model of the company is basically to balance profitability with care for the environment and the people. There is great concern over the connectivity between land and sea. When we see a healthy mangrove and other wetland areas, it means that the land around and further upstream is well managed. When the land is not well managed, all the negative impacts go into the waters, the river system and in the end to the coastal areas. Besides the fact that mangrove forests are an important resource for coastal communities, they also play multiple ecological functions essential to surrounding habitats. For instance, they protect coastlines against erosive wave action and strong coastal winds and serve as natural barriers against tsunamis and torrential storms. These coral reefs and the mangroves have a very vital role, not only with the local, but the whole regional and the global level. For example, when the tsunami affected in India 10 years back, I think 2006, the, where the intact mangrove ecosystems were there, the loss, both the property and the human loss, was much less than where the degradation takes place. 
that is one example where you can see how much the the benefit the intact mangrove ecosystems can really provide when we face with the natural disasters mangrove forests also prevent salt water from intruding into rivers they also help retain concentrate and recycle nutrients and remove toxicants through a natural filtering process. The Kota Kinabalu Wetland Centre, a 24-hectare mangrove forest, was originally designated as a bird sanctuary by the Sabah government in 1996. Two years later, it was declared a state cultural heritage site. Now, the state government is seeking it to be registered as a Ramsar site. I had the opportunity to visit the site. Mangrove areas are very important all over the world. And this site is also very close to the city. So it is important to show uh, to the city uh, how wetlands are important for life. And it's very important for education. Uh, and we think uh, it will be good if, if this site can be listed uh, as a Ramsar site to recognize the value of it uh, and to continue conserving it. And uh, many of the mangrove areas are also important for protection against storms. Uh, so it is important to have them around the city uh, and to educate people, to make a clear link between the life of people and nature. Kinabalu Wetland Centre, managed by the Sabah Wetlands Conservation Society, carries out activities to create awareness and support from the general public on the importance of mangroves and other wetland ecosystems. The Society too implements projects that promote the conservation, education, recreation, tourism and research in various parts of the state. First of all, I really uh, congratulate and uh, acknowledge the people of Sabah for undertaking such uh, wonderful activities. We have visited the wetland center, the communication, the importance, the awareness which the center is creating about the value of the wetlands is unprecedented. And uh, also the people are very aware about the value and virtue of these wetlands. In this uh, regard, the initiatives taken by the government of Sabah and the, uh, the government of Malaysia are very uh, laudable and they are doing excellent work. There are challenging times ahead. Globally, the years 2011 to 2020 have been declared by the United Nations as the Decade on Biodiversity. In harmony with that move, Malaysia's national policy on biodiversity also states that by the year 2020, Malaysia will become a world center of excellence in the conservation, research and utilization of tropical biological diversity. Similarly in Sabah, the management plan for the country's largest Ramsar site supports that national vision. This plan provides guidelines for conservation initiatives for the site covering the same 10-year period from 2011 to the year 2020. We have ignored, I must admit, the importance of these mangroves because we have been so much focused on the inland forest for so long. But now our approach is broader, more. We look at many things now. In the past, we were just looking at timber. Our approach is uh, multifocal. Multi we look at the multiple resources that come from forests, the benefits, the ecosystem services, and all these things are now more important, if not more important than timber production. A broader view, not only in terms of the scope of conservation work confined merely within the state of Sabah, but also in terms of wider geographic coverage. Conservation actions at the Ramsar site in the next decade are also crucial in support of the larger Coral Triangle Initiative. 
They will also help promote the conservation of the Sulu Sulawesi Marine Eco Region, which is also dubbed as the Cradle of Corals. Given such crucial role of global significance, the Ramsar site and all other areas of wetlands in Sabah must therefore be preserved at all cost. The Sabah state government is as determined as ever to safeguard the physical, biological and functional integrity of this Ramsar site and other wetlands and their ecosystems in the state.